Hi, Robert Chakro here. In this video, I'm going to talk about my understanding of what I do when I do the two main kinds of breathings of Tai Chi, namely natural breathing and reverse breathing. So I'm going to say what I feel when I do that, what I feel is happening, and I'm going to put it in the ter terms of physiology. In other words, the function of all the parts of the body that are involved. I'll bring in a little bit of very elementary physics. So this video will take longer than my usual ones, but I think it will have some information that will be of value. And I'll, be, I'll be interested in comments that people make because I don't know, it, I can't say for sure that I have the last word on any of this, but I do know what I am feeling and how I can explain it to myself. So let's talk about natural breathing first, and then we'll talk about reverse breathing. In natural breathing, and well, in both of these kinds, I am going to say that ideally they should both occur in terms of expansion, totally in terms of expansion of muscles, of tissues, not ever in terms of contraction. And the reason I am convinced of that is because of what I feel, but also because contraction is, takes much more energy than extension does. And so why do we have both? Because in many ways we have a redundancy of functions. So if one function is not working right, we can use another. And that's why we sort of have survived as long as we have as a, as a race, as a species, I should say. So in natural breathing, this is what happens. The diaphragm is a dome-like membrane that is basically connected to the base of the ribs. The ribs are quite a bit higher in the back than in the front. I'm sorry, lower in the back than the front. So the axis of the diaphragm points upward towards the back. And it's, when it's relaxed, it has a dome-like shape. When we breathe in, what we do is we expand the ribs. Uh, this is natural breathing that everyone who is doing it naturally should do. Expand the ribs. By expanding the ribs, we're expanding the diaphragm which flattens it. So two elements are drawing air in. One is the bellows-like action of the, of the ribs, creating a larger volume so more air comes in, and lowering of the stone because the, um, that also makes more space. And lowering of the, ab of the diaphragm can be done by expanding it too. So both the rib, the space, the tissues between the ribs, the muscles, expand the space between the ribs, open it up, and the diaphragm expands and helps that to happen. There's more to it than that because I feel that what is also happening, and this is a main thing in breathing, of course not everyone does it, is that the lower abdominal muscles expand when they expand, it creates a partial vacuum in the lower abdomen, which draws the diaphragm down even more, bringing in more air. But there's one other factor that I feel when I breathe in naturally, is I can feel my pelvis expanding. The pelvis, I did this, showed this in another video, can open and close. And when it does so, I can, I'm sitting on a chair, I can actually see, feel my sits bones, which are the lobes at the bottom of the pelvis resting on the, on the seat of the chair. I can feel them moving away from each other. And when I exhale, I feel them coming back. Not a huge amount, but enough that I feel it. So all those things are involved in natural breathing. Now what the medical profession will say is no, it's contraction. 
you're contracting the diaphragm and it's going down. Well, I think a lot of people do that and that's probably why they say that. Um, but I don't think that that's a good way to breathe and I don't think that, and I know I'm not doing that. Uh, just now I took a deep breath in, I could feel all those things happening. So that's natural breathing. When I exhale, I release all of that. So the young part of the of natural breathing is the in breath. The yin part is the out breath. The yang breath takes energy. The in breath releases. That is fine for everyday life, and I think it's great for doing tai chi. So when we open the arms, everything tends to expand and that's when I breathe in. When I release my arms, that's when I tend to exhale. I don't insist that that happen. I just notice that that tends to happen. Not all the time though. Sometimes I'll take a very deep breath. Sometimes it'll be opposite. Reverse breathing is a different thing. And that has to do with the martial side of Taiji. Mar using Taiji martially means there has to be strength, a lot of strength. You can't have any kind of martial art that doesn't have strength. And the name of that strength is Nei Jin, which is internal strength, but it's not ordinary strength. It's strength that's a little mysterious. It's strength that takes study. It's strength that is, has precision to it. And the reason for that strength is so that the body is resilient and strong, so it doesn't just um, succumb to what's happening. And in order to generate force, which you have to do when you hit somebody or kick somebody, there has to be that connection with the ground and that connection has to go through the body. And the spine of the body is the least able to have strength. But when you do um, have uh, strength in that part of the body in the abdominal region, it then makes the body much stronger and, be, and more able to um, deliver strength. So what happens in reverse breathing is the following. The in-breath is the same as the, the, the first breath in natural breathing. Diaphragm expands. I don't use the ribs very much and I don't think the ribs are too much involved, but the diaphragm sort of expands and the um, lower abdomen expands and the pelvis expands and that brings the diaphragm down, brings air in. The exhalation now is very different. And by the way, the inhalation is the in part because the exhalation is much more powerful. Now the abdominals are expanded and they don't release to, for the breath to go out, as in natural breathing. What they do is they stay expanded. Now the diaphragm expands out and up and pushes air out. When it does that, it, there's, a certain, there's a lot of expansion involved, which is what you can feel. It takes strength to do that, but extent, expansive strength. That then creates a partial vacuum in the lower abdomen, which requires, if the lower abdomen doesn't just succumb to that, and go in the way it would in, that, in, in um, natural breathing, the lower abdomen not only stays expanded, but in order to do that, it has to use even more strength because it's being pulled in. So the two movements are opposite and, and are, in a, in a sense, fighting each other, but not fighting in a bad way, but op opposing each other is a better word. So what happens now is you have to use a lot of expansion of the lower abdomen to keep it out and you're expanding the diaphragm. That creates a very strong midsection. 
but it does more because that expansion is now sympathetically radiated to all the other parts of the body which tend to expand when you do that and that is the training of Nei Jin. Now breathing itself has expansion in it so we have a familiarity with it but this takes it to another level it augments it tremendously and so I don't think that the Qi from the Dan Tian is causing this strength and this movement what I think is the qi results from the activation, the electricity that's involved, and the um, the the goings on of this, and so a lot of qi results from it, and it's a key to um, having the body be expanded in all directions in every part of the body as you exhale, which is needed in the self-defense situation. So I know this has been long-winded, but it needed to be in order for me to say what I feel. I don't say I have the last word on any of this. I don't feel that my way of explaining it is the only way. But at least if I, when you put it in terms of physics and in terms of you know uh, pre air pressure, things like that, and in terms of physiology, it can be measured and can be found to be the true or false or maybe some errors in there that could lead to a better understanding and which I would welcome if there are such errors so that's my um, understanding of reverse breathing natural breathing and the differences and why they have those differences and why they are so valuable to be able to do and that is where my way of explaining it thank you